Hi Pisces, welcome to your end of December 2019 general tarot update. It's Raina here and uh, I had to start over again. I was already in the midst of it because I looked to my side and I saw like five of these cards that I had not shuffled with the rest of the deck, which is a shame. You had a really nice spread without those cards. I hope this one is equally nice. I guess we'll see by uh, what the first card is. <laughs> oh, well, we got three swords here to start off the reading. Isn't that interesting? Another swords. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Okay. The heart of the matter is the Queen of Swords. When I get this card, I often think that the person is stealing themselves to make a decision. Stealing themselves meaning um, trying to brace for their decision because, you know, you are a water sign and you may have emotions that are kind of interfering with your ability to make a decision. Um, the Queen actually represents the water element and then we have swords which is the air element and dealing with the intellect the you know which means the more rational brain rather than the heart chakra and sometimes we need that mind to take over because the emotions can sway us um, in directions that don't lead to our highest good. When when a person begins to really uh, hone their emotions, it's a different story because, it, you know, we have higher emotions and lower emotions. The lower emotions are just kind of that reptilian condition response of like, I need love, I need acceptance. And, you know, wherever I can, you know, find it, I'm going to get it. And not being discriminating, not thinking like, is this person right for me? Is this job what I'm here to do? You know, am I too concerned with um, the material side of life? Am I too concerned with, um, am I too consumed with fear, worries? In the past position, we have the Eight of Swords. This is kind of being held hostage by your own thoughts. So, yeah, there are, there are also higher thoughts and lower thoughts. You know, your consciousness is your higher thoughts. Um, but your, you know, worldly mind is going to say, what if this happens? What if that happens? And that's what worry is, you know. Um, you've probably heard that saying that's like the acronym for fear is uh, false evidence appearing real. <laughs> Just pretty clever. And... I think true. Um, so the Eight of Swords is you is your negative self-talk and you know um, keeping yourself from being free. You know the person is blindfolded so they're they're not seeing things true you know honestly and then their body is restrained so they can't move it you know it just kind of indicates the um, feeling of not having, um, you know, freedom of movement, but it's caused by the individual. It's not, there's no, um, nobody's doing it to them. They're doing it to themselves. The higher message is the Ace of Swords. This is something that Pisces need to embrace all day, every day, which is seeing things as they really are. Um, let me see if, you notice how there's water, let me see if, well that looks like mountains, but in the other deck, I think the Rider weight deck, they show like the sword emerging from a, a murky swamp, because it's, it's to cut through illusion, okay, and so um, your ruler Neptune is about illusion, 
or fantasy. And sometimes that can be so wonderful when it comes to inspiration, when it comes to doing things that are creative. But in relationships or when you have to make important decisions, you can be swayed by um, the, the fantasy that is not panning out, that is not really um, the truth. And that can keep you in a lower place. So you want to make sure that you are always, um, you know, checking in with yourself and saying, you know, if you're dealing with somebody and you notice that they're kind of altering their behavior, or they're changing, um, and you, you see that things have changed, that you don't just kind of create a, an alternative narrative, but that you communicate with this person. You know, swords are about communication, and you have all these swords here. So you're probably being asked to communicate with somebody in order to decide what you're going to do. Now, you may have, perhaps you have already done that, and you haven't gotten a straight answer. That's when it's the most... I think that's when it's the most problematic because it's a horrible feeling to suspect somebody is doing something like behind your back, but you can't put your finger on it. Um, this could apply to the workplace too. Um, you may feel for some reason that you're tied to a workplace, that you can't quit. Um, it's amazing how many people keep themselves in um, in bondage. You know, I always think of that song by the Eagles where they say, so oftentimes it happens that we live our lives in chains and, chains and we never even know we have the key. And that's so true. Um, yes, of course, there are... Um, reasons for that, uh, maybe material reasons, but um, I think that some people can tolerate um, the unknown better than others. I'm not, you know, don't get it twisted. I'm not one of those people that is that it's easy that that would be easy for me to do either. But I do think that sometimes you do have to step out in faith. And also, sometimes it's not even about faith. It's about knowing um, what is true. Now, uh, the Queen of Swords might be somebody who has come into your workplace, and they are not very uh, warm. They may be kind of businesslike or just in their mind. It, this could be a female boss, especially. And you may feel uncomfortable now because... Um, you don't you don't have the same rapport as you did with the other person, and um, sometimes it can work the other way where you create these, you know, stories about what that means. You might think, oh my gosh, you know, she's going to fire me because she's not warm to me, when that's just her personality. So the Ace of Swords in that case is to you know, really um, ask yourself, you know, the the questions that are involved in self-inquiry. Um, I think of Byron Katie, if any of you know who she is. If you don't know, you can look her up on YouTube, and she has some books, and her process is called The Work. And I'm not really that keen on it altogether, because I like to do things pretty spontaneously, but... One of the things that I do use when she has these four questions, and one of them is, is it true? Like you ask yourself when you have these thoughts, you know, eight, uh, eight of swords, have these self-limiting thoughts, you know, I'm going to be fired. And you say, is that true? You know, can I prove that I'm going to be fired um, simply because of the way she's treating me? And usually you'll have to say, no, I can't prove that. So why am I saying this to myself? because um, there's like a looping that goes on in your mind, and, you know, just having these same negative thoughts over and over again, and, and just uh, habitual. 
And you can change that, you know, you can, you can flip the script. What crosses you is the King of Pentacles, and this is, um, if you're, let's say you're in a, a relationship with somebody, and you're married to somebody, and they want you to work, and they don't give a damn whether you like your job or not. They're just like very materialistic, and they, they expect you to, um, to do that. Um, you have to, you may have to like, um, check in yourself with that too, because sometimes we don't get supported even when we're dealing with something that really is unpleasant. And, you know, you would think your partner would be, would have your back and, and trust that if you're unhappy, that there's a good reason for it and that they would, um, you know, sympathize with you enough to say, hey, you know what, if you're not happy doing that, don't, um, don't worry about it, you know, I've got you, I'll support us, or you can, you know, that they will try to find an alternative solution, you know, these kinds of things are, um, you know, what supportive partners do. But this person may not be um, a very, very um, emotionally um, sensitive. They may be so caught up in how much money is coming in that that's all that they care about. This can be a very materialistic person, the King of Pentacles, because I'm reading it as a challenge card. And... Um, so this could be like a, also in terms of um, signs, like a, a Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn male. Supposed to be um, older, but um, maybe not that mature, even if they're chronologically older. The other thing, too, is... There may be also a situation, if this is a work situation, it's possible that um, the person that is above this individual is, you know, maybe the CEO or whatever, the head of the company. They are not um, sympathetic to you. They're just after the bottom line. And so you may feel like you have nowhere to turn. If this is a... This could be even your family that you're, um, that you've always tried to get love from your mother, and it never, you know, um, when I when I see kings and queens, I think a narcissist because they're in positions of power, and maybe this is somebody who has always withheld praise, even though this is in the upright position. I could see for a Pisces who's dealing with this person, like, especially if they happen to be an air sign, Gemini, uh, Libra, or Aquarius, where they are not particularly effusive, they don't kind of give those um, words of encouragement, and you may be feeling like you're um, left out in the cold, and it makes you turn on yourself and think bad thoughts of yourself. But... The Ace of Swords is about discovering the truth of the situation. Um, one of the truths, especially if you are dealing with a narcissistic personality, is that they don't have it to give you, even if they wanted to. So it's no reflection on you, it's actually a reflection on them. And you're wasting your time trying to get... And actually, I think you're doing that all the time. Whenever you're trying to get somebody to approve, love you, you're wasting your time. Love can only come freely. Uh, anything else is forced, and to me, it's not um, genuine. What's coming in is represented by the Page of Swords. This is kind of the spy card. In some cases, you know, because you're trying to ferret out the truth, you may be documenting things. You, you m may be preparing for some kind of a... Uh, like if you feel like there's an abuse of power at your workplace, um, you may be 
becoming very observ observant of the office politics or dynamics and then writing them down and documenting them. Um, if this is a situation in your love life, you, you may be becoming even more vigilant and aware because if the other person isn't telling the truth, um, you don't have much else to go on. So you either, maybe you're trying to um, catch this person in a lie or what have you. Um, you know, personally, um, I feel like unless there's like something to really concre concretely gain from it, it's probably better just to make that decision that the Queen of Swords is asking of you, regardless of whether or not you can prove something, because um, that can, you know, create a lot of um, problems. This can also be starting a relationship with somebody who is of the air element. Usually for Pisces, this would be a Gemini, but I could see a Libra person being very um, attractive to you because of their love of music and other art forms uh, and also the, their agreeable nature and the other air sign is Pis or is uh, Aquarius. The outcome is the Nine of Cups. This is a very good card. Wish fulfillment. Um, given the other cards here this may come in a completely different way. You may get something that you have wanted that kind of makes up for some of the other difficulties you've been having. Maybe this is what releases you from whatever that Eight of Swords represents for you, where um, you feel the sense of oppression and you're able to move forward in a way that is... Um, you know, satisfying to you. The Nine of Cups can also be, you know, with a love situation that you have met somebody that is emotionally fulfilling for you. It's the card that says yes to whatever your question is. And um, your cup runneth over, so that's really great, um, Pisces. I hope that you enjoyed this. Um, 2020 is coming up if you would like an astrological look at it. I have a natal chart interpretation um, with 2020 transits and, you know, just a complete transits reading and other readings as well. I'm linking a couple of them below. I hope you have a wonderful uh, new year and that 2020 is your best year yet. Take care. Bye.